best sequel of all time don't you dare <laughs> hate on my point by laughing <laughs> unstoppable i love how you just like you know like it's uh, the empire sitting there and then godfather sitting next to it and then, and then terminator is there and you're just dragging it and it's like no i don't want to come no and it's just like dragging its body like no go sit with them it's like sara kona in the mental <laughs> asylum <laughs> mancha in a world filled with war hate suffering and justin bieber two guys fix it all with a battle about a movie one film two opinions one coin two sides they feud you decide it's time for film feud Hello and welcome to Film Feud, the podcast where we debate whether top-rated movies should be top-rated. I'm Vidur and I'm Vikram. How are you doing today, Vikram? Um, pretty good, man. How about you? Good, 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 good. Okay. I'm ready to feud you. Why? Why did you just become like a Looney Tunes character all of a sudden? Yeah, mini, 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 mini. That's all, folks. <laughs> close, close. So, Vikram, mind telling the good folk what we're doing here? Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. I don't. That was very useful, by the way. <laughs> a great use of time for our listeners. Uh, you're always welcome, guys. We are recording a podcast where we pick a movie from the IMDb Top 250 at random. Then we go ahead and toss a very valuable coin, the Film Feud coin. Pa 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 ram, and heads argues for the movie, and tails argues against. That's right. And this week we are feuding. <sighs> Terminator 2 Judgment Day. What a nerd, man. Oh my gods. I haven't seen this movie in a long time and I'm pretty pumped, you know. If for no other reason than nostalgia. I think this was I'm pretty sure this was the first Hollywood movie I ever saw. I think it was between this and Rocky 4. on star movies i assume no no like a video cassette oh vhs vcr for the win vcr for the Damn. win yeah so mind revealing what you thought of this movie when you watched it for the first time when i was all of like 7 years old yeah yeah, yeah. yeah was... just watching like hollywood versus bollywood in that era honestly it kind of scared me <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of scary for a 7 year old yeah, it's meant to be yeah, yeah. maybe some make could have been like 6 or 5 as well but i, I kind of got scared i remember you know what's actually meant to be scary is t1 and full disclosure i have not seen terminator at least i can't remember if i've seen it really? I'm, i'm sure i caught it at some point but really that that's i mean um you don't I, i've seen terminator 2 many times at least a few years ago that is the last time i remember seeing it you don't need to watch terminator 1 for terminator 2 like at all a little bit to sort of understand why maybe sarah connor is acting the way she is yeah like- but if you've seen terminator 2 before then the next time you watch it you already know what happened in t1 right Does that make sense? No, no. Oh, okay. Well, thanks for shooting me down. I'm <laughs> glad you have my back. We aren't even feuding yet. Always, brother. So the point is, haven't watched Terminator 1, but I'm ready to watch Terminator 2. Pretty pumped about this feud. What do you say we get to it? Should we toss the film feud coin and see what 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 up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a very repetitive mood today, I've seen. <laughs> just for that. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Why don't you just go ahead and toss that coin? All right, here we go. Let me toss the coin. Heads is for, tails is against. Yeah, baby. And it's heads. And I am for Terminator 2 Judgment Day. One of my favorite childhood <laughs> movies of all time. Do you just remember coming back from school, sitting in the air conditioner, getting served lunch and watching Terminator 2 Judgment Day? No, it was it was The Simpsons for me, I remember correctly. Dun 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 dun. dun. I'm so pumped. I'm you know, so relieved. Uh, just to say, you know, I actually have a really close friend who's who's pretty well built. Okay. And then just to like mess with him whenever he enters the room, that's that's what I do. Pum 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 pum. Pum 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 pum. 
completely hates that's it. the ultimate compliment man to call someone good old arnold good it's, old governor i don't i don't know if i if that's if, if that's a compliment or not how are you so calm right now you are feuding against terminator 2 judgment no, day i i think i think i'll be able to handle this one pretty well really yeah man really yes oh really <laughs> <laughs> i don't even care about the coin toss i'm just pumped to watch this movie yeah, I think that's that's one thing I'm I'm kind of psyched about too. It's been really, really long since I saw this, so uh, let's see, let's see if it holds up. Let's see if my mature mind still perceives of it as as a fantastic movie or scary. Maybe I still get scared. Let's see, let's see how that goes. Let's do it. So, should we go watch the movie? Oh, let's do it. I'm so pumped. Let's go watch Terminator Two. And may I say to our audience, we'll be back. <laughs> Vikram, come with me if you want to feud. Dude, we shouldn't be doing Arnie impressions. I will ruin this episode. I know what yours is. It's something, something chopper. Get to the chopper. All right, let's just start off the episode with a (laughs) moratorium (laughs) on governator impressions. (laughs) Firstly, the man is a legend. I know he's been through a lot in recent times. But don't you malign his greatness with your stupid impression. As a politician? He's a legend. Simply this movie alone. If he just chilled, went to the top of a mountain and meditated for the rest of his life, this movie alone would be enough to make make him a legend. Look, if he chilled, went to the top of a mountain and meditated for the rest of his life, that makes him a legend. What are you talking about? How good was this movie? How good was Arnold... What a specimen he is, man. Look, firstly. look, look. Firstly, it's Arnold. How good was Sarah Connor, even John Connor, mm. James Cameron, God? I mean, Tom, like, mm. Titanic was like a dhabba on this movie. Dude, this I movie. can see the jizz in your hands right now. Can you go wash them first? Ew. Ew. There's no reason to get all jizzy and personal, okay? <laughs> this movie was awesome. I can't even understand what you're going to say. I mean... I just, actually have a lot. I surprisingly have a lot because it's been way too long <laughs> since I saw this movie. And um, what what's the memories I have of this movie are obviously from when I was a child because this was definitely one of the first two movies I saw. And uh, that, that, like memories, you know, whenever you see a movie when you were really young. And uh, firstly, I would like to say that um, every bit of the movie that scared me as a child, um, I laughed at when I watched it this time around. That's 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 a point, you think, in it's your not favor? A point. Did I say it's a point? I'm going to give you this one chance to just... I do not want it. Hand me the feud. No, one. absolutely not. This is... I will buy you a nice little meal as condolence. Because <laughs> okay. what are you going to do? I mean, this is just a waste of time for all of us. I've already won this feud. No, man. I fe- actually feel like the other movies where I had to argue against, where it was like a little on the fence, were they were way too tougher. This one just... It's so naturally Oh, yeah? Can I name some? Uh, what? We've been doing this for a while? <laughs> Never mind. Let's not, let's not. Dude, is this the best action movie of all time or what? Absolutely not. Of course it is. Name Absolutely a bad action not. Movie. Name a bad action movie. Real Steel. <laughs> it's not even the right genre, you idiot. I don't know. I don't know. Man, there's so many better action movies, dude. Let's not even talk about that. Let's talk about this particular movie. Yeah. This, this, this piece of... Art, if Cameron would like to call it. Indeed. Let me just lay my cards on the table about this piece of art. Not only is this the best action movie of all time, this is the best sequel of all time. This is up there with Empire. Uh Uh-huh. Up there with Empire. This and Empire, perhaps together on equal footing, are the reason, well, and the the Godfather. Godfather (laughs) 2, Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and Terminator 2, Judgment Day, are the reason... Nobody can ever say, oh, the sequel's never better. Well, here we go. Here's a better sequel. I don't even need to watch Terminator 1. Everybody knows it's better. First of all, I love you. You make me laugh. Thank you for that. Best sequel of all time. Don't you (laughs) dare hate on my point by laughing. (laughs) Unstoppable. I love how you just like, you know, like it's uh, the Empire sitting there and then Godfather sitting next to it. And then, and then Terminator's there and you're just dragging it. And it's like, no, I don't want to come. No. And he's just like dragging its body. Like, no, go sit with them. It's like Sarah Connor in the mental <laughs> asylum. <laughs> like, no, I don't want to go there. No, they're too good for me. And then you're like, just go sit, man. 
Are you kidding me? Dude, just like Empire, firstly, this stop movie it. Please, has... Stop Please stop it. All right, I don't need the Empire um, Clearly you do. You said it six times in the past 30 seconds. It just has soundbite after soundbite of just like amazing, iconic, epic dialogue. Amazing, iconic, epic scenes. Amazing, iconic, epic chases. Have I said amazing and iconic? Have I said Empire? Have I said best? Have I said action? Have I said sequel? And, oh my god, it holds up, dude. Isn't that crazy? This movie holds up? 25 years ago it was made? There's something else crazy going on right now. <laughs> which is you talking. And I'm um, just waiting for you to get done. Uh, after you're done with like all this general, just like throwing shade at... Name a better action movie. Name a better sequel. Empire. Name a better sequel that's not Empire. My Godfather 2. Name a better sequel that I haven't <laughs> named yet. Wait, so uh-huh. you agree they're better sequels? Uh-huh. 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 You agree they're better sequels? Do you agree that they're worthy of comparison? Because then I win. With T2? Yeah. No, of absolutely course. not. Godfather 2? Godfather 2? I'm just throwing this out. That's the best sequel of all time. I mean, <laughs> we are, it's not even... that. That's my position. Okay, I, guys, uh, I'll spend the rest of the feud proving it. Let's move on. Yes, please. Please, let's get on to you trying to prove it rather than you just... Endlessly repeating it. Oh, no, no. Don't put the burden on me. You prove your stupid Oh, position. I will. I will. I will. 100%. Let's hear it. 100%. Le- le- just throw out the worst thing about this movie. No, I will not. I will not. I will. Oh, you're saving it? Yes. No, I'm not saving just it. Just like gonna your go- virginity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was, that was a good one, I guess. Again, thank you. You make me laugh. I want to start this feud by saying that in absolutely no way in hell, Will I be diving into the warped theory of time travel that this series presents? I do not want to dive into it. The the first and second movie are self-contained, uh, accurate. Not getting into it. You cannot try to tempt me into it. It's not happening. The amount of holes in that theory. What theory? The amount of holes in that time travel theory that this movie or the Terminator oh series God, tries to even, present. I don't even think you'd bring up time travel. It it's, has so many holes. Like what? It's it a grandfather paradox. That's any time travel. I do not want to get into it. I'm all just, right. all I want to say is, Don't bring it up if you don't want to bring it up. But if you bring it up, I'm going to bring it up. <laughs> okay. Yes. I'm just saying, it's fine. Time travel in this movie is fine. T3, T4, the rest of the movies, which, let's just face it, James Cameron no longer had control of and they kind of lost the plot in terms of time travel. The Terminator movies do not exist after T2. Agreed. Great. I'm Fine. glad we're on the same page. Yeah. It's Terminator. When we talk about Terminator, we're talking about Terminator 1, the original, and Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Wow. I'm so excited we're on the same page here. This is the kind of stupid pushback I expect from you. No, bro. Not at all. T3, 4, 5. I don't even know how many are made. Salvation. All of that stuff. Not counted. It, it was just like... Genesis. <laughs> Genesis was one? Yeah, the one with Khaleesi. Worst one ever. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. None of that. He's like, he stays on Earth for like 30 years and like waits. Oh, I don't even get it. She calls him um, daddy? No, what does she call (laughs) Terrible. No, uh, when I talk about time travel, I only talk about... Pops. She calls him Pops. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Anyway, moving on. I had a joke about time travel and the holes this theory has. Please do. No. No, please. The time has passed. No, you can't tease Just me like, like time travel, the time has passed. I hope that wasn't the joke. No, that wasn't the joke. And moving on, off the cuff, let's just talk about Cameron and, and his direction. I honestly feel, and this is no, just to take a te- cheap shot at Terminator 2 and all, but I feel like this was one of his last few movies when he was an okay-ish director, when he actually transcended the next level, went to like Titanic and Avatar and stuff, because he made like, he followed this up with the god-awful True Lies. Do you remember that movie? I don't actually, but I, I mean, Dude, yeah, okay, sure. I'll, I'll summarize that movie in a scene for you, okay? Arnold Schwarzenegger's flying a jet next to a skyscraper where his daughter is being held by the kidnappers. He has a jet, like a full-on like MiG-21 F-16 type jet, like hovering next to like a skyscraper. So like mid-city, mid-New York, he's like just flying a jet around. <laughs> that's that's True Lies, by the way. I mean, Arnie is an action hero, you know? You I mean, up your Cameron's game every like time. a good director now. Like, what was he thinking? I mean, Cameron's a sort of a legend more than he is a good director, right? Like Avatar, everybody kind of hated on the movie itself, but what he did with that movie is mind blowing. I think he that- directed that movie really well as well. Mm. To to be able to bring all, of, I think the director's biggest role is to be able to bring all those things together and and make them hold up. In, okay, in- so let's stick to Terminator Two. Where did he fail? He just killed it. I mean, firstly, his vision alone. Terminator One, he was a new director. He was like some twenties kid. 
who got a small budget for like this crazy ass action sci-fi movie pulled it off by this terminator 2 time he knew what he was doing had a vision had the budget and made something revolutionary i mean the special effects in this movie are mind boggling for the time and looking back i can't believe they hold up yeah. and even the vision of the special effects much like he in the future showed that he has crazy visions and brings them to life with titanic and avatar the vision in this movie is just insane how did he envision the t1000 and know that he could pull it off so you know convincingly again um not going to hate on the special effects because it's a 1991 movie if i'm not wrong it's kind of crazy how 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 they sort of hold up i kind of agree with you there but i feel like he just had so much focus on all of those elements of the movie that everything else just fell flat like what the casting man i firstly linda hamilton is amazingly casted and no i feel like he just got stuck with linda hamilton cuz she was part of one that's no way to talk about his wife at the time <laughs> so what <laughs> he didn't she's get not my wife she's not my mommy <laughs> and what john connor dude that kid's supposed to be 10 years old in the movie all right he's so supposed he to be 10 years old in the movie dude he's like a time travel baby you know it's got to have some impact like his his father he needs to send back his father and all that he he's like you know that please stop time paradox stop. grandfather is his own son you have to admit he doesn't look 10 years old <laughs> oh, he doesn't look 10 he's years like, old he's riding dirt bikes all over town you didn't ride dirt bikes when you were 10 <laughs> no man i missed that part of my life just i don't know what happened there but <laughs> you know what i kept wondering is like who is this 10 year old stunt man that they got or who is this 18 year old stunt man who's playing a 10 year old <laughs> and then like the first 5 minutes of the movie felt like i was in like problem child or something man like just like he is a problem child he's a delinquent cuz his mother is in a mental asylum no. that's great problem child the movie oh, okay with what was that one john ritter and like that da 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 dum da dum that kid that messed up kid yeah i don't remember this stuff i i only remember great movies uh-huh. like terminator 2 right. i'm sorry no worries man no worries but i truly feel like all right you're picking on john corner i get it he i will grant you that he doesn't look 10 who gives a shit they could have just said he's 13 it wouldn't have really matter no dude i really i because he's the essence of the movie he's john corner no right? arnie is the essence of the movie uh-huh. and linda hamilton is the second essence arnie, of the movie arnie arnie will get to arnie and i feel like he he did a solid job in t1 where he actually looked menacing as a robot who's trying to kill everyone who comes in his way in this movie he's sort of badass amazing oh, iconic epic shotgun on a motorcycle reloading and shooting hmm. like a robot ninja badass mother clucker michael bay jerry brakhamer could do like better stuff with that i oh, it really Lord. felt like a michael wait a bay second. wait a second it really really felt like a michael bay jerry brakhamer action movies from the 90s at times which is bad enough this is insane i mean firstly to the extent that those that mean something michael bay jerry brakhamer even michael bay was making action movies on a whole different scale like the rock is still like set in reality you know like the special effects in the rock is like what is this explosion i can create and that's it this guy jc jesus christ james cameron <laughs> jc who was miles john ahead john connor jc and john connor oh <gasps> he was miles ahead in like 1991 man that's insane and just coming back to your point i get it like edward furlong in the movie does not look tan whatever and he's a little annoying i'm okay. granting you this for free he's not a little annoying he's extremely annoying he's like <laughs> a whiny little bitch throughout this movie he's side note but he's the heart of the movie side note side note okay just fun fact if you if you just google the four main actors from the movie and what they look like today robert patrick who who played t1000 the antagonist of this movie actually ages the best okay? yeah he's great he's like and he, Ed- he... edward furlong looks the oldest out of all four. <laughs> It's hilarious. All right, let's not talk about what happened to poor Edward Furlong. He basically grew up to be like a delinquent, right? Or something like that. He, he was John Connor. He grew up as John he Connor. Up he, as John he, Connor. He just Listen, it's not easy. Child actors. Absorbed that character. Yeah, child actors don't have it easy. Mm. Within the movie, I have to say that one line though. <laughs> Did you call moi a dipshit? It's like the most self-proving sentence ever. <laughs> so that's yeah. when I think he was peak annoying. but he is the heart of the movie and he does the whole like you know teaching terminator ani all the fish out of water stuff teaching him the random spanish phrases it just leads to such iconic shit i mean how can you even hold a grudge against john connor when he's responsible for so much joy in the world mm well not too much joy right because he just shows up in this movie and if you want to count John John Connor from the other movies he actually like net net he's like pulling people down in the world in terms of 
um oh, contribution and stuff okay let's just dive into this movie i want to talk about arnold as we go along and his character and and the way he portrays that character again one of the one of the earlier scenes when they when they're trying to break sarah connor out of the mental hospital right and obviously at that point of time sarah connor is she just has like tremendous ptsd from like terminator 1 and in her mind arnold schwarzenegger's terminator version is a killing machine right and uh then they 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 meet and then john connor tells her that oh he's he's my friend he's here to save us and immediately she's just like she's fine with it whatever cuz she sees him save her yeah sure and then do you remember that one scene where uh t the t1000 ends up at the ho- he's obviously at the hospital he's like killing people left right center and he meets them and then they they run to this elevator yeah so there's this one scene where um but Sarah Connor John Connor already in the elevator and and Arnie just like shotgunning him to like stop him yeah. and then he just turns around and starts running in his balle balle fashion have you noticed that what cuz he has the shotgun in one hand and for some reason his other hand is also up when he's running just notice that it's hilarious <laughs> and like and like T1000 in just like perfect form like olympic athlete running yeah. and Arnold Schwarzenegger is running like he has bricks in his underwear or something it's, no. a, it's the funniest thing I did not notice this I was too busy noticing the funniest amazing... thing ever dude there are some funny things in this movie I'll grant you that but and sometimes they're also unintentionally funny maybe this one is one of them do you also remember that scene where <laughs> The T one thousand walks by a mannequin, you know, like completely silver mannequin. Huh. And I'm sensing you didn't notice this in the movie because it's such a split second. And it just looks at the silver mannequin and it gets confused, like as though it's seen a friend or something. Oh, like yeah, 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 I saw that. <laughs> and also, like he shouldn't be, he shouldn't be. Uh, that there's another gripe I have, which very minor, which will keep coming up here and there about how when when these machines become a little. empathetic or when they show a little emotion when they choose not to when they choose to but we'll talk about that later i have a quick question for you i know even though you haven't seen terminator you know the gist of it what happens yeah. and uh, basically arnold schwarzenegger's the terminator sent back by skynet to kill sarah connor so that john doesn't yeah and kyle reese is the guy sent back to protect and he ends by up by john connor and he ends up being the dad right right uh, so the loop starts there Why why didn't Skynet send back more terminators to kill Sarah Connor? Uh, there's some in-world explanation. Doesn't matter. No there isn't. Yeah, there is. Where? It doesn't matter. Of course it does. That's all they could send. No. They the they, future movies they do send them. Turns out that they sent one in 1983 also. Oh, so we counting the future movies now. Doesn't matter. Do my not, point is do not allude to the future movies. All right, I don't need to. My point is that anytime there's a possible explanation, you can count that. I mean, think of how Nolan makes his movies, right? Like you know you don't hand feed to the audience leave it open to interpretation as long as you can come up with an explanation that's good enough isn't it i don't think so man not not so where cameron is right now at this point of his career and like his vision and and everything that he thought about the universe the terminator universe and stuff like that it just has so many holes that it's so unsatisfactory as as Come on, it doesn't make any difference. Like, oh, the machines could have done this, this, this. Okay, that's matter. that's maybe where we where we differ in terms of um, satisfaction attained from a movie. Like, I I would love for there to be answers or even a potential for answers to happen. Right now, it's just so open ended that fan theory is unlimited. And like, yeah, that's good enough. Anything. What I get out of a movie and satisfaction is like great characters. badass action scenes amazing direction okay so you know you skipped over sarah connor just by mentioning her in the asylum i don't know i plan to talk about her a lot sarah connor is the most badass heroine is that how you pronounce it or is that the heroine term? heroine in in like forever i mean do you remember james cameron talking about wonder woman how he kind of hated on wonder woman because wonder woman was being propped up as like a feminist icon where as whereas James Cameron was like no not at all she's kind of scantily clad and she doesn't really do much whereas Sarah Connor was like a real feminist icon and i must say those are very controversial comments everybody's like oh James Cameron just you think she was a feminist icon she's just a badass action hero who's a woman i mean that is awesome and she really is badass in the movie and they explain it because in the first movie she was just like a waitress or something right, right. that jump in this movie is so cool because they justify it completely they say she's constantly just preparing for judgment day she set up these like bunkers and friends and weapons she's well trained in all of them she's taken john connor around which reminds me by the way the in world explanation is very clear for why john connor is how he is because he's been on military bases just being prepped for like military training to be a military leader all his life that's why he can ride dirt bikes and is like the most proactive 10 year old ever and sarah connor is just badass 
N- n- no, I can't think of a single woman portrayed in movies that's as badass an action hero while still being grounded in reality. You know, it's not like some, I don't know, Aeon Flux or something where just it's just a woman kicking ass for no reason. I I don't know how to feel how you, how you feel so strongly about that. I in fact thought um, more in the opposite, and I felt her character was extremely unlikable to the point where I feel like they Perhaps. made it very unlikable, right? Perhaps, and, yeah, I could because that. in in particularly in the movie and the actions, uh, the steps she takes in the movie, for example, are are extremely detrimental. Um, they they push they pull everything back. Uh, they they don't help John Connor or the Terminator's mission at all. Yeah, you, she's not a good mother. You know, she's, she's kind of she's, deranged. She's the worst mother. She's the worst mother. And then... And, and that's saying something because she is the mother to the person who's... Well... Yeah, it's on purpose. It's done well though, right? Because she goes through that whole unlikability and then eventually she goes and tries to kill Miles Dyson. Amazing bit part, by the way. Legend, Miles Dyson. And uh, then she doesn't do it. And, uh, you know, in fact, James Cameron spoke about this being his favorite scene when she's about to kill Miles Dyson and she knows how many lives she would probably save or at least thinks she would save and she doesn't go through with it like basically you can see her wrestling with herself not with the fact that this is Miles Dyson and in, eventually she loses the battle to her own morality and doesn't do it and that's kind of like her arc that's the redemption she goes from total deranged one mission prevent judgment day to actually back to being human again and figuring it out all together with her newfound family, including Mr. Ani. I truly feel like she's the weakest part in this movie. The she's not a good actor at the end of the day, right? She her character might be badass. It might be it might be um, extremely polarizing in terms of opinions and stuff. But as an actor, she's I don't think she's good. The way she portrays her suffering and then she's mumbling half the time and talking about the future, this, that, and like just it's Well, you didn't like her. At least she at least she convincingly played that, you know, and then she has that redemption. And she's a badass action heroine. It's fine. She doesn't need to act like really well or anything. You can see that she's worried about John. It's really all that she needs to do, isn't it? And then all her mental asylum acting is good enough. I think she's like pretty convincing in that stuff. Oh man, even even when she I don't know. I I feel like her acting is she's the character in this movie where acting is the most important, right? It's it's the most important skill because hey, hey, hey. Arnie needs to act too. No, no, we'll talk about that later, dude. But but she needs to act the most or she needs to you be know, the best actor in this movie. We talk about it now because I just disagree with you on this point and also I can't believe you're like sapping away the fun of this movie. This movie doesn't need to be analyzed on like this acting level and all that shit. This movie is Dude, just like Cameron movie. Like, it's just I, like mwah, mwah. it just has like <laughs> what? scene after scene of mwah, the first chase through those like LA tunnels where uh, the crazy part is if now we know exactly what T2 is all about. You know, we've watched it many times through childhood. When Terminator 2 first came out, I don't know if the trailer spoiled it or not, but you don't know whether Arnold was good or bad. So actually, when Arnold is chasing John Connor on his motorcycle, when John Connor is being chased by the T1000 in the truck mm-hmm. through the you know, those half pipes in uh, LA or whatever. That scene is amazing because you think that Arnold's trying to kill John Connor, just like he did in T1. And then he turns out to be the savior and he does the whole like shotgun reloading, which I already mentioned. Mwah, what a scene. I don't even just, know if trailers are a thing in 91. Yes, trailers have been a thing since the birth of movies. I don't know, man. <laughs> and a lot of them would spoil a lot. I, I think the Empire trailer spoiled it. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, whatever. I mean... Good or bad, doesn't matter. Mwah. Not good or bad, not good. Mwah. Just Stop that scene. Mwah. It's kind of weird. I know it is weird, but it just makes me go like that scene where uh, uh, you find out that the T1000 can uh, replicate humans, can imitate humans, and uh, it's uh, where John's foster dad is killed. Uh, when uh, T1000 is basically John's foster mom, picks up the phone. And then just shuts her husband up and then it's off screen and then you pan to it and the guy's just been stabbed through the eye. Uh-huh. It's just so crazy. It just comes out of nowhere. It's such a badass, crazy ass scene. Mwah. 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 Okay. The I... Linda Hamilton twin mirror scene. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't believe she has a twin firstly. Aren't you amazed sometimes that there are twins in the world? <laughs> 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 nice side note there. Uh, so they shot the uh, scene where she opens up Arnold's head 
and removes her chip that allows him to learn more things. Mm-hmm. And the way they did that is by using Linda Hamilton's twin and like a, a sort of a fake body of Arnold. And so they pretend to be sitting in front of a mirror, but it's actually Arnold, Linda Hamilton, Linda Hamilton 2, and an Arnold that they open up. And it's just like so amazingly shot. That is like typical James Cameron innovation, amazing execution. Okay. Any other adjectives you want to throw in there? Yeah. I'm done for the moment. Mwah. Maybe another mwah. Mwah. Jesus, man. I don't know, dude. Arnie, Arnie is, you would think that naturally he's, he's, he's meant to be the robot in every movie because of just the way he is. Perfect like, casting, might I add. Wow. And uh, he still messes up. He still messes up. He's the perfect robot. He's a perfect machine in T1, right? He's perfect. Barely any dialogue. I don't even think he has any dialogue in T1. I don't even remember. Of course he does. Give me your clothes, your boots, your shoes, whatever. The opening dialogue. In T1? It's the same in both movies, I okay, think. Okay, so, but it's it's like minuscule compared to T2, for example. He's interacting a lot with John throughout the entire journey, trying to understand why do you cry and all of that stuff, right? <laughs> the whole idea behind this movie is, I mean, it's not the whole idea, but a big idea behind this movie is basically, by the end of it, a machine empathizing with human emotions. I feel like that's pure crap. It's just made to elicit emotions uh, from the audience. It completely belies the core idea of the franchise. And that's machines versus humans. And the person they find to try and act out that personality shift is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Who, when he's acting like a human being, mind you, still feels more like a machine. So it just doesn't makes... that work well? No, it doesn't. It, it completely does not. It's intuitive, but it doesn't work. It, it's just so stupid. And I just... I cringed when he's like, oh, I understand why you cry now and I can't cry. I'll like, grant you that. That's Thumbs stupid. up when he's going down hey, and all of that. Don't you dare say anything against a thumbs up. Fuck that thumbs up. Just fuck it. How dare you? It that just, thumbs up is like the thumbs up in modern cinema. That combined with the thumbs up that Sunny Deol gives in Border are the greatest thumbs up in cinematic history. And look, I can't believe. Look, obviously, I'm not going to hate on the Sunny Deol Border thumbs up. It makes no sense, but I can't hate on it. But it's expected in a movie like Border. This is just next level. This is a James Cameron movie, according to you, a piece of visual art, all that genre defining, best sequel ever. And a great time. Best whatever. Most importantly. He's doing a thumbs up. He does a thumbs up. He gets human emotions. He does thumbs up. What do you mean he gets human emotions? His learning chip has been taken out, like, so he's allowed to learn. So he learns. No, you cannot. You cannot justify that. You cannot justify that. Hasta la vista, baby. No, it's the stupidest thing ever, that machine (laughs) learning emotions. Because then Skynet just fails. It just becomes human then by the end of it. If you think about it. it. This movie just completely rids itself of logic when it wants to and completely... It defines itself by logic when it wants to. And that Why? to me annoys what about logic? me. It's such a great time. It's no, the movie's man. just a it's great time. When 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 a respected director, a visionary of his time and all of that makes something, then it has to hold up. And it doesn't hold up it at totally times. holds up. My only question about the thumbs up scene, which I think is amazing, is like why he kills himself at all. I mean, he can live for 120 years. Why does he need to kill himself? He should just hide. Oh, because he doesn't want people to get a hold of his technology again and And they leave his arm in the factory thing again you know when his arm gets caught and he gets rid of it himself like he breaks his own arm after the t1000 traps him in like this machinery right he just just like t1 he leaves the arm behind it's so dumb yeah you think that's what that's what causes judgment day eventually i don't know i mean dude arnold man it's just it's so great because they they also play with arnold himself and like Arnold from the first movie so much everything you're saying as a negative is I think it's like almost a very self-aware playing around I, I don't Arnold. think so I think it's a lot a lot of it was was put in there to make it a more popcorn mainstreamy movie yeah like a naked Arnold in the beginning yeah when he walks through that bar where everybody's <laughs> looking at his dick I, I read this review where uh, this dude's like why did they make me look up a governor's asshole in the first scene of this movie. Oh, it's some guy who's in the movie. Oh, no, yeah, as an like, audience. It's just like a, like, what? But then <laughs> this other review was awesome. Like, and it talks a little bit about how... I'd, if if a naked Arnold walked through a bar, I'd look, I'd look, you know, I'd look. If a naked guy walks through a bar, you'd look. No. I no? Or you'd be like, no, oh, you naked guy. Off. Wait a second. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> Is there something you want to tell me? But if a naked Arnold walked through, uh-huh. oh, I'd look. Oh, you'd look? Yeah, I'd look at that. Yeah. Tree trunk. Tree trunk. You're already assuming it's a tree trunk. What if it's like a small pecker? 
Are we so really discussing this right it. now? You started it, man. You started it. And you know I'll take that forward. 100%. I mean, what a specimen. How can I not think about it? <laughs> He's naked walking through okay, a bar. Yeah, let's, let's stop. Let's stop. I also want to talk a little bit about this, um, you know, this relationship that John Connor and and um, the T-800, I think it was the 800, sort of, sort of set up. And I understand what you mean about how they wanted to try to make it more human. Arnold Schwarzenegger trying to smile and like doing the high fives and the two slows and all of that. And the fact that he under, doesn't understand any of it makes sense. But by the end of it, the fact that he starts understanding all of that, that that's when it starts going a little off course. And uh, this, this, uh, this, this review I read, it just sums it up perfectly. It's like, this movie took one of the biggest badasses in cinema and turned him into a stepdad. <laughs> 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 killed me. That one I just killed me. It's like so amazing. It accurately sums it up. I was kind of confused because then there's this whole scene before uh, Sarah Connor goes to kill Miles Dyson where she's like, after all the men that have been in my life, a machine is the one he finds a stepdad. So I get it. James Cameron was trying to play with a lot of themes. Some of them worked really, really well. For instance, Apocalypse. Most of them didn't, though. Most of them did, of course. It's no, just like, man. listen, like any action movies need human characters at, at the center, right? For the arcs and the emotions to mean anything. So the mother-son relationship worked. And, you know, this kind of father relationship maybe didn't work. You know, the machine stuff worked. Maybe a little bit like the stepdad thing didn't work. But... Is it a good time or not? I mean, come on, dude. The only good time that this compares to, I think, is like something really out there, like Face Off or like some Nicolas Cage movie. Because as an action movie, as like a crazy, crazy good time in the movies, nothing beats this. And before I forget, the one thing we haven't spoken about is the music, the score. How unbelievable. I mean, iconic is easy to say because that's kind of a retroactive thing. You know, it becomes iconic. But just by itself, it's so good, so potent, you know. Typical 90s, like very strong melodies. It's just stuck in our head forever for a reason. It's yeah, that good. The, the, score, the score is good. But I just want to come back to um, uh, when you're talking about how... So you just grant me the score is good and the you come back good. to something? Yeah, the score is good. Let's it's just it's highlight that you're doing Actually, that. wait. It's, oh, it's you good. Found something? No, it's good. But then... You know, when you watch movies as a kid and you really love them, it, things kind of stick with you. So maybe, maybe there's some sort of bias. I personally like this movie as a kid because I didn't understand much of it. And it's like a lot of shooting and action and whatever, robots and stuff. I want to talk about how, how uh, you were alluding to this movie about it being a good time and all of that, right? And comparing it to Face Off. I agree, it's a great time. But it's not an IMDb top 250 time. Otherwise, Face Off would be here. Con Air would be here. This all of those movies would be here. version of that movie. I along with... No, no chance, man. Along with... How can you say... All right, fine. And this brings me to the obvious question. If you had to replace this on the IMDb top 250, what would you replace it with? I particularly don't feel that this movie must be on the top 250. But just to show you how much I was disappointed in Terminator 2, I feel like T2 Judgment Day should be replaced by the Shah Rukh Khan epic, colossal... Don't even, don't even finish that movie. Thought. Just don't. Called Ra 1. Oh my God. Ra oh 1. My Lord. I feel like it did robots and machines at least as good as terminator 2 did how dare you just just that's how much i was disappointed i can't even look at it right and now and talking about terminators and machines we still haven't spoken about t1000 too much right badass amazing badass, best sw villain. swords for like hands like olympic runner like oh my god like shape shifting <laughs> like oh my god my dude blocked how scary burner. how badass firstly the actor dude robert patrick just killed it He's so menacing. And he's actually like very unassuming looking. Apart from the fact he looks a little bit like Ray Liotta. Like there's nothing, you know, interesting looking about him. But he just used his like eyes and features and haircut and running style to scare anybody who watched this movie in the right age. And in general too, still a menacing villain. I think Robert Patrick was the best casting in this movie. Okay, fair. I still think Arnie was, but yeah. Arnie was Arnie and Sarah Connor were there because they were in there in the first one. And Arnie, I mean, okay, because he's like he's Arnold Schwarzenegger's star appeal and all that. I think there are like a multitude of reasons for him to be in this movie, but pure casting, as in that's the character we need to find an actor that fits that role. It was Robert Patrick. Hands Amazing. Down. The T one thousand had such cool qualities. For, uh, I mean, the T one thousand was just so cool for its time, man. 
I don't even know how they must have done the special effects. Do you remember what computers were like in 1991? And this is not like Kubrick Space Odyssey. Like, they had to show some crazy shit in this movie. I don't know how they pulled it off. The liquid metal, the the amazing scene where he turns to ice. And, you know, once in a while you can see, oh, this is how they did that special effect. Oh, this is like, you know, uh, a, a model or something. But for the most part, it was just amazing. I, yeah, I guess. I mean, the special effects were good. I've already granted that. But talking about T-1000 within the movie, uh-huh. firstly, he shouldn't be there. What do you mean? He's not supposed to travel back in time. What do you mean? If you remember the whole concept of traveling back in time, you can't unless you have human tissue, for example. That's why that's why Arnold Schwarzenegger's Terminator has a lot of human tissue. Right, right. Yeah, it's, I remember. There right. needs to be some organic substance. Yeah, otherwise, like, they could just kind of just be sending back, like, nukes and, like, bombs and stuff, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, but he can't, that's why he can has no human tissue. He's like liquid, polymer, alloy, whatever the hell he is. Why is he there? And there's no, there's no Who given cares? answer. I care and you care too. I know that because we're both nerds at the end of the day. No, I, they have some end world oh. explanation. <laughs> when something's so vague, nobody cares. Listen, I thought you'd be complaining about things like, oh. Oh, like, no, I have more complaints. <laughs> how I'm, does he touch I'm, someone and become with their clothes and all? No, no, I don't. Okay, even, even if without understanding or without any specific reason of how his abilities work he's able to mimic someone as soon as he touches them uh-huh. right in that final scene when they're when they're at that factory whatever that steel melting factory thingamajig is yeah at this one point he he's busted everyone up right he, john connor's run away he's literally killed um arnold schwarzenegger's character and he's pinned terminator is the name of the character <laughs> oh is that it yeah oh that's what the movie's name right yeah, yeah. oh i got it i got it and he's stabbed Sarah Connor in the shoulder and he's pinned her. Yeah. And then he asks her to shout for John. Yeah. Why don't he just kill her and mimic her and go for, that, go to John? That's what he does eventually. Why doesn't he just do that? Well, that's what he does. No, no, not eventually. Why does he ask her to shout for John? Maybe because... He has no, she, he has no emotions about vengefulness or ego or anything. Like that. He's a no, machine. No, his mission is to get John Connor. So he evaluates at the time in a oh, way that oh, we can't. Uh-huh, that uh-huh. the best way to get John Connor <laughs> is to keep her, Sarah Connor alive. Is for her not kill her and just mimic her and just be Sarah Connor? He kills her. John Connor just runs away. He has nothing to come back for. This is obvious, bro. This is villain 101. Uh-huh. How does John Connor know the first moment that he's uh, Sarah Connor? He's imitating Sarah Connor. Oh, come on. If, John, if Sarah Connor dies... Because... because Okay, just to complete my point, because when he does imitate Sarah Connor, John runs to him until the real Sarah Connor shows up, if you remember that. I will just say, I think you're focusing on the wrong thing. No, the I'm biggest not. problem no, I'm not, is just... when he becomes the floor, <laughs> comes into contact with the guard's shoes, and then becomes the guard, the fat guard. I don't even want to get into that. He dude. becomes a guard and he has the badge of the guard. Yeah, he has everything, all the clothes, everything. It just I'm I'm just like <laughs> I'm not even stopping there, right? They, they're doing that just to drag the movie out, make it like more emotional. Like, oh my God, he's wants to skin star. Oh, kya hoga, kya hoga. Arnold Schwarzenegger, like he literally terminates the Terminator. Uh-huh. But like, it's like the Terminator has but like it's a like set Bollywood, of like... Bro, it's like Jay Matadi and like yeah, the Terminator like a, comes he back. A, he, has a, he has a set of like AA batteries stuck up his ass for like yeah, reserve power up. and stuff. He's yeah. like, oh, rebooting. And he like, underestimated oh, Arnold. You never underestimate Arnold. And this is... He's supposed to have all of the knowledge of how a Terminator functions and all of that. But he doesn't know he has like reserve power. You're so focusing on the wrong thing. What about I'm the scene focusing when on absolutely Arnold what you're supposed to be focused with on. With a pistol and shoots everyone in the leg. What about the scene where Arnold just goes on the, on the window and then just shoots all these cop cars with like a minigun and like a grenade gun? What's wrong with you? Why are you, you stuck on you, all the you, dumb You're things? actually proving my next point, which is... Uh, my sort of my summarization of the movie that this at the end of the day is a kid's movie yeah and we saw it when we were kids yeah and therefore our generation loves this movie because it just is not a a kid's movie wait i'm gonna take that back a kid is at the heart of this movie no no no, this is a movie for kids no it's not of course it is is die hard a movie for kids your your explanation for everything arnie standing at the window shooting everyone with a minigun yeah, explosions chase and all that those are your positives to this movie the actual crux of the movie the things that's oh, supposed to be holding is, this together is mad max fury road a kids movie it's not but if i was talking about mad max fury road i'd be talking about all the amazing things i wouldn't be talking about oh like how did that guy even take con- 
control and how do the politics work and what are the rules and you know no, how do, no, why don't they run out wait, of fuel I'll, I'll tell you the difference Mad Max is a pure action movie this is not a pure action movie this is a sci-fi movie it's close enough yeah no. sci-fi but like action sci-fi it's not like 2001 and by the way most sci-fi movies as a genre leave things way unexplained right i mean i, I don't know man that's 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 where i kind of fell short in my liking towards this movie it's not because i got against but i truly felt that because it's so heavily reliant on the sci-fi they should have they should have plugged all the holes and made sure that it held up from a sci-fi perspective and not just like made like throw a lot of action on it to just cover up the the gaping holes there i just want to not care about what you just said (laughs) (laughs) and mention a few miscellaneous points about this movie that are just one the 90s throwback (laughs) <laughs> is the mullet on John Connor's friend. That is a strong mullet on a kid right there. Yeah. Amazing. Second, the John Woo style roses falling to the floor when he takes a shotgun out of the thing. Uh-huh. That was so out of place, yeah. Yeah. but it's still like, just, I don't know, remind me of John Woo and still, you know, kind of badass. It was pre-John Woo, so that's why it's interesting. Then, a lot of people miss this, but do you remember when the T-1000 is flying a chopper through the streets Right. Which is so cool, by the way, because they actually did that. And literally, the cinematographers were not willing to do it. And then he got on the rig himself and he shot it. And then the chopper pilot was not willing to do it. But he's just like, I don't know. Let's just try it. Let's just see what happens. And he did it. And he's like, well, you need to do it twice. He's like, well, if you can do it once, we'll do it twice. Made it happen. But the T-1000 is actually shooting at Sarah Connor and John Connor in the truck in front of them. And then driving the chopper with the third arm. <laughs> yeah it's so cool so many people miss this yeah. i saw like some meme about it and then when i was watching it again yeah and lastly shout out miles dyson best death ever in a movie this movie sucks oh my god that's your summary that's no, great my summary is this movie is a kid's movie and this movie sucks i think my summary was covered in my initial uh mwah, 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 mwah. <laughs> yeah we all got it so uh should we wrap this up please i'm done with this movie for the longest time I have the most obvious way to end this feud ever. Yeah, I kind of see it coming. Why don't you do it? No, no. no I insist. It's yours. It's yours. I insist. Come on, just to make up for all the horse shit you've said about this movie. <laughs> no. Ready? No. Steady? Definitely not happening. Fine, I'll do it. Hasta la vista. And that wraps up this particular episode of Film Feud. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed that. And now we feud it. It's time for you to decide. Go on Twitter at Film Feud Pod and let us know who you think won the feud. Obviously me. I don't know, man. I feel like I have some I have some listeners out there who resonate with my thoughts in this movie. And I didn't know I would get so passionate and I was getting annoyed while feuding, which has never happened before. And uh, I'm sorry for that, Vidur. Oh, that's very sweet. I don't accept. <laughs> I still think your view on this movie is wrong. Okay, then. So, you guys can reach out to us on Twitter at Film Feud Pod. That's Film Feud Pod P O D. Or write to us at Film Feud at MuncherMedia.com. And don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Pocket Cast, wherever you catch your podcast. See you guys next week. See ya. Bye.